I did not perform as well as I thought I would when I sat for my certificate of primary education a long time ago. <laughs> and I did not perform as well as my father expected me to. You see, I am the last born child of my mother and the third born child of my father. So hey, you guessed right, I hail from a polygamous family. And for those of you who are able to appreciate that the birth order affects the personality of an individual, can imagine the turmoil that goes on inside me as I juggle between last born personality traits and middle child personality traits. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, I digress. I vividly remember our drive back from St. George's Primary School the morning we received our results and the harsh words that my father spoke to me. You know, Mudhani, he said, with these kind of results, there are only two professions that you could probably end up in. A maid or a prostitute. There was pin drop silence. I mean, the tension was so thick, you could cut it with a knife. <laughs> what did that even mean? I was 12, going on to 13. I cried. With an older brother and sister who had, you know, been admitted into some of the most prestigious schools in our country, here I was, with results that would not do the same for me. Eventually, <laughs> I was admitted into a small rural school and I made a promise to myself that these two professions ha, were not going to be my portion. Uh, I refuse. And I made a conscious decision there and then that I was going to work hard. <laughs> I've never worked so hard in my life. You know the son of feet in water and so on? And as the old adage goes, hard work pays. I passed very well. And I was admitted into a national school. Whereafter, I went against the grain and joined the university to study a degree in teaching. Against the grain, you say? Yes, because now my father's career choices for me were medicine, law, or accountancy. <laughs> um, in 1982, we were allegedly, purportedly involved in the coup d'etat and were sent away from campus for 14 months, during which time I got pregnant and married. <laughs> Much to the outrage of my family. I mean, I was the first in our family to be admitted in a public university. Daddy thought I would be expelled. And I remember distinctly, during our graduation dinner, my graduation dinner, you know, I declared that I graduated from the university with a degree, a husband and a child. <laughs> my father has always had a very strong influence in my life. After um, completion of my A-levels, I had helped my dad with his business and we had developed a very close relationship. And I remember one day, my mother, in a fitful rage, said to me, what kind of a relationship are you trying to develop with your father? Why are you so close to him? Why do you spend so much time with him? What do you want from him? These words were spoken to me in my native tongue. Hey, this tongue. <laughs> At 19, my solution to this predicament was suicide, which I attempted. <laughs> Clearly, I didn't succeed. <laughs> I prospered in my teaching career, and I was a principal at the age of 30. In my considered opinion, that was not bad. <laughs> I mean, pretty hot. And I attribute this a lot to my size. <laughs> uh, 
um, because for most of you, if you flash back and think of your principals in school, most of them were old and gray, right? Yeah. So here was this 30-year-old, um, you know, principal. But um, this seemed to be the only area that I was thriving in because I was in an abusive marriage. And this time round, the tears didn't seem to help. So I stopped crying. When I couldn't t handle any more of it, I, I left. 13 years of marriage. And I left with the most precious gifts that I had acquired in this union. My three children who are now 33, 24, and 22. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> I came back to Nairobi. You know, remember I, was, I had gotten away from this place. I came back to Nairobi and I continued in the private education sector as a principal for about 10 years. And whereafter I joined the tertiary education system and my last formal job was as a registrar in charge of research, academic and student affairs in one of our um, pri private universities. I loved my job and I did it well. But you know there comes a point, there come a time as they say, <laughs> where I felt that I, 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 this is not what I'm made of, I, I can do much more than this. So I went back to school to study for my masters, <laughs> listen to this, 24 years after I had been first given, you know, the power to read, you know that jargon. So now, armed with my new qualification, eh? papers. I thought, hey, I would conquer the world overnight. Yeah? yeah? When this didn't seem to happen, the routine of work began to eat at me. 2012, my 180 degree turning point, I cut my then shoulder length hair short, dyed it red, took early retirement. I was 50. <laughs> this was further catalyzed by my participation in Alabastron, a self-renewing program for women, which made me realize that there were so many possibilities out there. There were so many opportunities, which earlier I didn't have the courage to venture into. I wanted, I wanted a bigger platform. I needed to reach and touch more people's lives. So... I auditioned for a role in a 250 episode series, Corner with Mnet. I got the role. So, I left the comfort of a swivel chair and the security of a monthly salary to move into the world of acting, to become an actor. Did I take a risk? Yes. <laughs> but I wanted to reach and touch more people's lives. So God gave me Africa. Bold. <laughs> Foolish. A little bit of both. I'll leave you be the judge of that. And just before I, I conclude, there are certain, there's a certain song that every time I get to a point when I'm in this predicament, when I don't know what to do, it sort of like encourages me. And as you try to dissect and analyze whether I made bold and foolish decisions in my life, I'd like you to listen to the words of this song. Edie, please.
Thank you so much, Edie. Regrettably, my father was never able to see me on TV or on the silver screen. He lost his eyesight 16 years ago, and I lost him six months ago. So this is for daddy. I would like all of you to know, and him to know, wherever he rests and looks down on me, that my past does not define me. I know myself. I believe in myself, all that I am and all that I can be. And I know that there is something inside me greater than any obstacle out there. Ladies and gentlemen, salute. <laughs> 